Hello people from the future, welcome to Normalize Nerd. I know it's been a year since I uploaded my last video, but as I mentioned in my community post, a lot of things happened in my life in the past year, and I was super busy with it. But finally, I am here with a new exciting video. In this video, I'm going to talk about feature scaling and normalization. And hopefully, I'll be able to clear some misconceptions along the way. So without any further ado, let's get started. First of all, let's see what feature scaling really is. For that, we need a feature. Suppose X is a continuous feature from a raw dataset and we haven't performed any pre-processing on it. To visualize the distribution of X, let's plot its histogram. Now I'm going to divide every value of X by 2 and this shrinks the histogram. Well, this was an example of feature scaling where we literally scale the feature by half. We can also subtract a number first and then divide it by another number. Here I'm subtracting by 7 and then dividing by 2. This shifts the histogram to the left and shrinks it. Here I chose the subtracting and scaling factors randomly. But if we choose some specific values for them, then we achieve normalization. For example, if we subtract by the lowest value of x and divide it by the difference between the max and mean values of x, then we call it min-max normalization. Let's see how it changes the data. Oh, it's too thin. Let's zoom in a bit. You can see that now the data lies between 0 and 1. And this is not a coincidence. Min-max normalization maps the data in the range 0 to 1. Next comes the most popular one, that is standardization. Here we subtract x by its mean and divide by its standard deviation. After applying standardization, our histogram looks like this. Now there's a huge misconception among the beginners, that is if we apply standardization, then it makes the distribution a normal distribution. This is simply not true, don't believe me? Let's take a very skewed distribution. If we apply standardization on this distribution, you see the shape doesn't look like a normal distribution, does it? Well, the thing is standardization is a linear transformation. All it does is it makes the mean 0 and standard deviation 1. If we want to change the general shape of our distribution, we need to apply non-linear transformations like logarithms, square roots, etc. But I don't want to get into those things today. Let's move on to the most important question. Why do we even care about feature scaling and normalization? Well, the first reason is to achieve faster convergence. Take the good old gradient descent algorithm. Assume that we have two features x1 and x2 and theta1 and theta2 are the corresponding weights. I'm ignoring the bias term here. If we assume the least square cost function, the weight update steps will look something like this. Now let's think of a scenario where we haven't done any feature scaling, hence x1 and x2 have vastly different ranges. Let's say x1 lies between 0 and 1 and the range of x2 is 100 to 1000. So what do you think will happen during gradient descent? Due to the small value of x1, the step size for theta1 will be small. On the other hand, as x2 is huge, the step size for theta2 will be large. And this difference between the step sizes can cause unwanted oscillations during the optimization and delay the convergence. The second point is related to computing distances. We know that memory-based algorithms like KNN and K-means depend on computing distances between the data points. But what happens when the features are not scaled properly? Let's take an example. Here we have two different features along two axes. You can clearly see that the range of the feature along the horizontal axis is much bigger than the other one. So when we compute the distance between any two points, the horizontal component dominates the vertical one. But it is not necessary that the horizontal feature is more important. It's just due to the bigger scale. Let's apply normalization along both axes. 
Now, if we compute the distance, you see both features contribute roughly equally to the distance. And by using normalization, we made sure that the algorithm in use won't be affected by the feature with a higher scale. So that was it guys. I hope you learned something new about feature scaling today. And if you did, please share this video and subscribe to my channel. Stay safe and thanks for watching. Thank you.